When we are adding in these columns, all we need to do is we're, we're going to go to our members page and then I'm going to select my column add. Being that I am going to use this over and over again, maybe I want to select the pin to quick access. As soon as I select that, we can see that is then pinned on the left side toolbar. So I'm going to go ahead and select column add. And as soon as we do that, we can see we have this bar come across that's going to ask us our section size and a whole bunch of different information. We can see our locate page is automatically brought up and has all of our point locators in here. So looking at our column at A1, we can see that is a W10 by 49. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in here. I can go ahead and either type that in here or hit the browse and browse for that section size. Another nice thing with this is if I am browsing the section size, I can just type in W10 and it's going to automatically snap us to that and then I could go in and select the W10 by 49. When I say OK here, it is going to update that section size and then it's going to ask us some more information. These fields that are grayed out do not apply based on the materials we have. So in this case we have a toe direction if we were using an angle or a channel. Next we have our reversed and we have a double or a single material again if it was an angle or a channel. Next is our bottom. If I hover over this, this is going to ask me for my connection type. If I drop that down, we can then see we have an option for auto standard. We have an option for plain end, user base and cap plate. We have clip angle, user defined, auto base cap plate, our splice plate, or we have shear. In this case, we're going to use the user base cap plate. When I select that, that's then going to ask me what number is that. Well, in this case, we know from looking at sheet S5 that this is going to be our BP1. However, if I didn't know what number BP1 was, I can hit this browse button and it is going to bring up our base and cap plate schedule and it's going to show everything that we filled out in that schedule. In this case, I'm going to select BP1, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And then we have our elevations. We can lock that in. So if I wanted to, I could type in 99-2 for the bottom. And then on the top end, we can specify the same thing, the connection type. In this case, we don't have a cap plate, so I can just leave that at auto standard and then I can lock in our elevation here. With that locked, looking at sheet S5, it shows it going to the roof, but it says elevation varies. If we look at the framing plan, we can see it calls out the elevation of 126 foot zero, and we can see there is no plus nine and a half or anything here, so we'll go 126 dash zero. The next question is our column rotation. The column rotations are going to always follow the web of the member. A zero degree rotation will have the web running horizontally, where 90 degrees will have the web running vertically. A positive rotation will rotate the column counterclockwise. In this case, we can see it does need to be rotated 90 degrees. One way I like to remember my column rotations is I just remember the word HI, H-I. H is going to be your zero degree rotation, where 90 degrees would be your I. With all of our information here filled out, I'm going to go ahead and select A and 1. If we zoom in, we can see the wide flange outline there. Now looking at our button bindings, we can see left click is for locate, middle click is repeat, and right click is return. So we got to be careful that we don't middle click to try and pan, as that would repeat or add that column again. Looking at S2, we do see that W10 by 49 is the same and same rotation at AN2. 
So I can middle click there to repeat that last column. And we do see the same at A and 3. So I can middle click here. And then we do see we can repeat this at B1. And looking at sheet S5 as well as S1, we can see it says the exact same column is at B3. However, it is a different section size. So I cannot repeat that. We can, though, repeat that at D1 and at D3. So all of those are the same. And then I can just change my section size here to a W8 by 48. And then I can locate that at B and 3. Looking in our next schedule, we can see we have the W8 by 48s that are at B2, C1, C2, and C3. So we're going to take a look at that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to leave this at our W8 by 48. And then I'm going to change our base plate to use that BP2. So again, I can browse, select BP2 and say OK. And now that updates. Again, I can lock in my elevations. And if we take a look at C1, C2, and C3, we can see that those are not all going to be at the same elevation. C1 and C3 are, but C2 is going to be plus 9.5 inches. So we need to make sure when we are adding this that we are watching our elevations. So we're going to start at C1. C1, we can see, does need to be rotated back to 0 degrees. So I'm going to hit 0. And then I will single select to locate that at C1. And then I can middle click at C3 to repeat that because that is an exact copy. Now if we look at B2 and C2, those are the same rotations. They're just up 9.5 inches. So I just need to come in here and type in 126-9 and 1 half. Again, I can use the plus symbol on my keypad to add that space between the 9 and the 1 half. I'm going to go ahead and locate that at B2 and C2. The next columns we're going to take a look at is at D and 1.9 and D and 2.1. If we take a look at S2, we can't see those columns at D1.9 and D2.1. For this, we'll look at S1 and we can see those in there. We can see the rotation is going to be 0 degrees and it is W8 by 31. So for this, I'm going to go W8 by 31. Looking at S5, it is the same BP2. And looking at this, we can see it calls out the W8 by 31 starting at 99 foot 2 and then going up to the second floor at 114 foot 6. But there is a bolted splice at 110 foot 0. For this, what we're going to do is we're going to change our elevation here to 110-0. Because of the way SDS2 adds these splice plates or these spliced connections, these are going to be two separate members. So we're going to add the first one from 99.2 to 110 foot 0. Our top connection then needs to be changed to a splice connection. So we'll select our splice plate. And then I'll locate that at D1.9 and D2.1. And then from there, we can go 110 foot 0. And then our top elevation then is 114 foot 6. And then we need to look at our connections on that low end. That is now going to be a splice connection. And on this upper end, and then that can just be back at our auto standard. I can then select at D and 1.9 and D and 2.1. For this part of our training, we aren't going to worry about the, con the column at D and 2. And we aren't going to worry about the upper ones at E and 1.9 and E and 2.1. We're only going to worry about the pipe 6 standards. 
So for this, we need to type in our section size of pipe six and then STD for standard. We need to change our bottom end connection again back to our user based cap plate. We can see that is that type A, that is the 10 by 10 by three quarters. So I can browse and we can see that is BP3. Our bottom elevation is going to be 99 foot two. And then our top elevation here is 107 foot eight. Now pipes and tubes do still have a column rotation, but in this case, it's not gonna be as crucial as these are gonna be round or square. However, if you do have a rectangular tube, you will need to pay attention to these rotations. For this sake, we're just gonna leave this zero and we're gonna locate these at E and 2.1 and E and 1.9. The last column we're going to take a look at for this first part is going to be at E and 1. At E and 1, we can see that is an HSS 4 by 4 by quarter, and that is our base plate type C. So for this, I'll type in HSS 4 by 4 by 1 quarter. Hit tab, and we can see it capitalizes that all, meaning that it found it. And then we're going to browse and select our base plate BP4. I'm going to say OK. And then the elevations are 99.2 and 107.8 already, so that is correct. So we're just going to locate that at E and 1. At this point in time, we have our columns in here for what we need at this point for our anchor bolt plan. So I'm gonna right click out of this to complete the column add. To take a look at these columns, if I wanna see them in solid and make sure they look correct, I can either hit SA on the keyboard for solid all, or if I select them all, I can right click and go into my member styles and select solid opaque, solid transparent, or solid transparent main. Or inside of my display, I have the option for change all to solid opaque. So I'll select that and then we can see our columns with our base plates. And we can verify our rotations of the base plates and everything are correct. We will get into some more options here with the creation of these plates and everything in a future video. If I wanted to take a look at these columns a little bit more, Maybe I wanted to see what they looked like. Holding down my shift key, we can see my middle click button binding now becomes rotate. So I'll shift and I'll middle click over a member and rotate, and we can see that in an isometric view. However, these columns look fairly short. Again, that's because my depth check is turned on and I'm, and I'm only seeing three foot in and three foot out. If I undo this depth check, we can then see our full columns.